Welcome back, you're joining us for Operation Vengeful Blade, the latest in a series of successful Vengeful missions. Uh, the Ops guys just decided that if you keep naming them the same thing, they're gonna keep winning. So, uh, I mean, thanks to him for that support. Anyway, we've got a fairly good team here. Uh, a few Corporals are training up and also trying to save some higher ranked troops for the Covert Operation that's coming up and a potential terror mission, which could strike at any time. I, I believe it's gonna happen. You know, the, the, the CIA of XCOM, my Intel Ops unit, has told me there's gonna be a terror mission, I believe them. Uh, anyway, let's get down there and let's try and get us some live captives, if you will. This is Big Sky. We're just north of the crash site. Strike one is in position to engage. Loud and clear, Big Sky. We'll monitor those readings from here. Strike one is authorized to assault the alien craft. The rain falls down over XCOM strike team on Operation Vengeful Blade. So, not forgetting what our purpose here is for captures and secondly for meld. And we've got one canister on the right here. Uh, apart from that, I haven't seen any. So, what we're probably going to be doing is heading right, trying to grab that meld canister, and then we'll be backing off from the UFO it depends on where we hear pods, because our best chance of getting captures is obviously outside of the UFO itself, getting far away from the outsiders. So if we hear like a sected pod or a thin man pod, I mean ideally we want to grab that meld first, but if we run into contact we're going to be focusing on those captures. So the way this is going to go ideally is up to the right here, take this hill, fight up the trench, uh, grab that meld canister, then probably loop around to chase any pods we've heard, get some captures, head into the... Uh, Head into the ship and finish off the outsiders to finish the fight. Um, really, this map is uh, one of the bigger, if I may say so, one of the bigger uh, UFO maps, at least in playable area and area you're actually going to fight over. There's a lot of ground to cover uh, and a lot of very tight ground on the left. So uh, let's let's get into it straight away here. There's not a whole lot of planning I've got for this one. We're going to head out, we're going to play it by ear, and we're going to base a lot of our strategy off what we hear out there. lead off with, where is the Dean? Dean's back here. In that case, we'll lead off with Daishi. Heading there now. Positive enemy contact. Hello. Alright, we got four stealth squids on our right, first contact. Good to get him out of the way, I suppose. Now, I believe we brought J-Bows, who is a fire in the hole rocketeer. Uh, yeah, this is probably going to be better. <laughs> Why don't you just go ahead and... Well, 2.3 scatter could miss and I am in trouble. It's probably smarter than just getting the cover against these guys. Uh, as annoying as it'll be if I miss. We'll stick J-Balls up the back where he can deal with okay. anything that gets through. I would have loved to have just fired a rocket off contact then, but I thought about it. I thought, you know what? That could go very wrong. That could definitely go very wrong. I got a 76 on that guy, so probably take a 76 flush on this guy, maybe. Or just shoot the ground guy. What do I want? Skew man needs to be in position yeah. here, covering. Hypergeek does have heat uh, grenade, so I can probably just use him to defuse the situation. Defuse, because he's an engineer. Haven't actually got the play of heat grenades that much. Um, so I kind of forget they're a thing. Let's see how this works for us. Yep, that's a thing. Well, we just took out one, two, three. Heat grenades are pretty good. And now we can just finish off the last one. Hey, it did deal seven. Good old crits. Well, that's that dealt with. Um, Daishi, if you'll be so kind aye, aye, Commander. as to keep taking ground here, we might be able to make good time towards that meld. Got it. Moving. Nicely done, team. Voy hacia ese lugar. Ten four. On my way. Yeah, I really gotta remember I've got these new, new juicy things like heat warhead grenades. Very easy way to deal with that clustered seeker pod. 
I think uh, I've said this about chrysalids too. The one way you could make chrysalids and seekers really scary is if they didn't cluster up so much and reveal. Because chrysalids, you flame them and blow them up. Seekers, you blow them up, uh, and it's usually pretty easy to deal with them because of that. Now we hear drones out there. If they're with a cyber disc pod, could be bad. If they're not. I don't know what to tell you. Um, a solo drone pod is going to die just as quickly as that seeker pod did. So I'm going to get the lead out heading towards that meld canister. I'm not going to waste any time here. I feel confident in my ability to take out that pod if I run into it. Even if it does have a disc. Thin men, that's good. I need a thin man captive. We'll grab him after the meld. So let's say right now we've got a drone pod right, a thin man pod left. We'll grab the meld right, probably kill the drone pod, and then we'll fuck up those thin men. It's nice that I got the audio cues. I kind of know the drone pod is in that direction. I don't have to worry too much about running my right right now, especially that seeker pod on the right Stepping taken off. care of. I can really get the let out. Which is good. It's good when you go on these landed UFOs. You take a good team. I take a good team on these landed mediums, or crash mediums, because you can roll like, you know, four mutons a pod for three pods, and just get absolutely destroyed if you take rookies. But when you do get fairly easy pods like Seekers and Drones on one of these missions, and it turns out you didn't need this many powerful troops, you've really got to exploit the fact that you brought them anyway. And you've really got to turn that advantage into something. In this case, turning it into a meld advantage. Hugging the right, not going to get flanked if I do reveal, which is going to be handy. Running. Solid copy, Commander. I'm just going to keep moving it up very fast. Lots of dashes. Scout with uh, Sprinter leading the way, letting us dash a lot here, which is great. We're making great time on that metal canister. We should be able to pick it up easily. Moving on target location. Man, before I started playing Long War, if you could have told me that in like a year, I'd be dashing frequently, I would have told you you're crazy, but Long War makes the game a lot, uh, a lot different to vanilla. Hey, move it up, Daishi, come on. That's affirmative. Visual on the goods. There are the goods. Now we're getting close to the UFO. We can probably start taking half steps here because we've been dashing the entire way. I'd say it's safe to kind of take a breather. Just take a blue move here. It's getting a bit dangerous because we're not seeing line of sight to the left there, so we want to slow down a bit. Let's do this. Just a little bit. Je suis déjà. Also gives the rest of the squad half a chance to catch up. So if we get in contact, they're actually capable of assisting us. Running. Now with this many scanners as well, I can also throw out a scan to see what I'm about to run into. Scanning target area I love having two scanners on my scout and then additionally another two scanners on my engineer. That's awesome. When you only have a couple scanners, you really got to save them for seekers. But when you have a lot, you can start to actually use them for stuff like this. And that's really great. Aye, aye, Commander. All right, we're going to grab that meld next turn. They're probably going to go around to the left. So I'm going to start hitting my guys to the left if I can. Safely, of course. We want to take cover, of course. So we'll put Zim in this position. And start heading back left. Okay. Okay. Rolling. Heading out. Zim finally gets to reload. I get a lot of people in my comments who always tell me when I miss chances to reload, and trust me, I know. You hear that? I know I'm not reloading. I haven't forgotten. It's just there's better shit to do, like double move, especially in a high capacity magazine like a like that you find on a machine gun. Aye, aye, Commander. 
Mm -mm, tasty. Down to five. That's not good. You're starting to lose out on the meld there. Right, move it up to here, Hyper Geek. We don't need to throw a scanner just yet. We can hold on to that. But I will bring you down. Aye, aye, Commander. I'm all over it. And then though. Still got those drones out there. At around this time, got to remember that we're not just going to kill these things and we're going for captures, so I probably want to swing around here uh, and engage them in close quarters from this hill. Um, the, the thing of it being, if I engage them at long range, it's much harder to lock them down for a capture, but if I come around this hill, obviously, I'm going to get in close and it's going to be much easier. So what I might do just here is, uh, as I like to do on these UFO missions, because they're big maps, there's a lot of movement, I might do a quick skip for you guys until we uh, get to where I want to go, and then we'll resume. Alright, now at this point, uh, we've covered a fair bit of ground. Um, I'm hearing that the Thin Men still sound quite close to the UFO, but I've also got some kind of audio over this hill. Now, it could either be in this little rut here, it could be on the hill, or it could be on the other side of the map. We don't know. Um, it might be worth chucking a scan over just to check it out. Right about here should clear up a lot of questions, or there even, should clear up a lot of questions about what could be out there. Okay, so. That scan's revealed parts of both of these hills. Fortunately, that tree's blocked a bit of it right there, but if there's any movement, we will catch it. Uh, it's revealed there's nothing right here, right here, so we're probably looking at the pod back here. So we'll keep on going. Now we're in the the close combat land right now. Now of course there could be something out here too. Let's just check. I'm on it, Commander. No. Nope. We're in the close combat land right now. This is the really tight part of the map I was talking about. We're gonna head over here, put a sniper in position with Kung Tut. Uh, then sneak through re the really tight part with uh, good cover and elevation on the hill. Try and catch us some thin men out of the open, and we're just gonna have to suppress them and flashbang until we can get a capture going. So we're just going to keep on moving up through here. And this scanner is useful because as you can see, it's kind of awkward to engage here. You've really only got two firing points until you make it to this tree. Uh, we don't want to have to fuck with that. And now we won't have to. Already there. Stepping off. Covering now. So we've got a couple scanners left to use. And obviously there could be another seeker pod, so the less we use the better. 
Yeah, if I take a nice big movement out here, that'd be helpful. Aye, aye, Commander. Weapons free. All right, there's that drone pod. So they were on my left. It's all right. Could have been much worse than drones. So we'll just fall back into cover with Daishi, and we're just going to set up uh, as quickly as we can in cover here. Because these guys are going to be coming in, and the only real dangerous thing here dealing with these drones is we don't have any good cover right now. Is that a big daddy drone? It could be. Right, we got a uh, sniper shot on Kung Tao, which I might as well take. Good job. We can easily flush that one. Put Scoob Man in position to overwatch. He's got a shot right now, even. Uh, we can also run and gun Dean up to get a shotgun shot. Yep. No reason not to right now. J Bells, we're not going to need the rocket, so I can put him somewhere else right now, like around here. And Hype Geek could be useful, where he can just run out and grenade, so again. Just making the best of the limited uh, spots we have right now. On my way. All right, 42 is pretty good. That's all right. Better to take it than not. Gonna deal with this one over here, hopefully. Ah, uh, well. Can't do them all, and then uh, no reason to not take an Overwatch, I suppose. Rather than shoot the. Rifle won't kill one, and it might just make him feel weird, like it seems to be doing. I, I guess they don't want to run the Overwatch, which is very cute. Oh no, it's just he's uh, beep boops repairing his buddy. Boop beep. That's very cute. They're all clustering for warmth. All right, and there's your shot. Pretty good, uh, pretty good accuracy. Not so good damage, but that's drones. Oh, they are clustering for warmth. That's so cute in a frustrating way. Alright, so this turn, we can try to get some holo targeting on, on point. Okay. Hopefully not activating the main on the right, but it seems unlikely. Oh, that little one's on the ground too. They're so cute. And they're going to be so dead. Heading there now. One great thing about drones is they can't overwatch. That's one great thing about engaging them. They're really not cut out for combat, honestly. The The most dangerous thing about drones uh, is if they run at you and you don't kill them in time and then they um, they just get free flanks on you because you haven't put them down. That's really the most dangerous thing about drones, I believe. So they're really dangerous against rookies, but beyond that, I think you're okay. Not bad, not bad. Could have been better. Right, you may as well take care of the bigger one. Target eliminated. Now we just gotta see if anyone can get in the position to deal the last one. But it doesn't look like it. So we'll just be putting J-Bells on Overwatch, I suppose. Move up Hyper Geek. And hopefully it just doesn't score a lucky shot on us. I shouldn't be in flank range. Shouldn't, he says with crossed fingers. I shouldn't be in flank range by a couple tiles. Yeah, no, we're good. Ah, oh, poor little drone. I tore apart the... Tore apart the drone family. I killed daddy drone and mama drone, and that little baby drone is like, please, end my life. Scuba will oblige. So that's one more pod down. Now, it seems like what we just might be facing here is the outsiders and the thin men. So I'm just going to get my sniper in position on this sniper island. Sneak across the high grounds with our capture team and then probably have our middle of the road is like infantry and uh, daishi right here. Suppression up on the hill to pop up and suppress a thin man. And probably go from there. First things first is getting our sniper in position, then we're taking the assault team right, basically. Aye, aye, Commander. 
in Bewegung. Cargado y listo. Mel's not a concern at this point. We can kind of slow down a bit. On my way. Not to worry too much. Good to go. Let's do this. Probably better to keep uh, my scout with the assault team because of those flashbangs. Back in. Oh yeah. Tight, with the okay. capture team, if you will. Pretty sure I just saw a hint of Half-Life 3 being made. Yeah, there it is. I think Firaxis might know something about Half-Life 3. That's obviously what that is. Okay, let's cross across left here. Heading there now. Daishi in position. I'm all over it. Just getting our team ready. A la orden, comandante. Got it covered. And I'd say we can afford to use our battle scanners to get eyes on a thin man at this point if we get a good beat on him. Oh, I hear their footsteps out there. They're not too far away. Not too far away at all. And once my boys are in position, I'll throw a scan out from the uh, from the hill. Why don't we put you there? You need to be ready to move up. Why don't we put you here even then? In Rocket there. Daishi, come Come back across, son. I'm gonna stick the sniper. Kungtot's gonna go down the end here. Double time. Which means we're gonna start bringing the assault team over to the hill. To capture hill. On the move. Ich mach mich los. All right, now I need a scanner thrown. Perfect. Try and put it in a place where we're not going to get blocked by too many trees. Right about there should be good. Show me something squishy I can take home. That sounds like progress. And is that them cowering? That's them cowering right there. So, this hill, if they don't move too much, should be able to take us right to them. We're gonna head that way now. The art of the capture. Don't want to fuck around with these guys back here. Want to make sure we're moving quick because if this Thin Man Patrol patrols into us while we're fucking around, uh, it's it's obviously it's a bad time for us. Our team's gonna be split. We're gonna be forced to kill a lot of them. Don't make me kill you, Thin Man. Just stay where you are. Oh, they're gonna make me kill him. Enemy in sight. All right, this is kind of helpful. They're splitting at least. That one's right for capture. Well, at least they've split the same way my squad has split, so they're not actually going to punish me too bad for being out of position right now. That's very nice of them. Thank you. Okay. So we've only three arc thrower uh, things in the bag. Now I believe um, Thin Men are going to give me bonuses to laser research, which isn't critical right now, but will be very useful for later on. Uh, and they are something I can interrogate right now, which would be nice. So, I mean, any captive is good, but... Uh, de definitely, I'd say medium of the road on importance to capture right now. So, if I can set up some captures here, that would be definitely preferable. But more than that, i got to make sure I don't die to them. Can't get too cocky when you're setting up a capture. Can't forget these things are dangerous animals. That demand your respect. That might be an easy grenade on two of them. While also getting Hyper Geek a bit closer for a capture. Yeah, set that up right there. Very nice, very nice. <laughs> I want to just rocket the uh, the one who's going to be a pain in my ass to deal with. 
But disabling might be smarter on him instead. Oh, I could disable that one too. If I throw a rocket over here, with not much else to use rockets on this mission, let's be take a free run at capturing these two idiots. As long as it doesn't scatter too far to the right, it won't kill the other one either. So if I throw a rocket right about there, Launching. deal with this guy. Alright, well I could also just totally expose him and fuck his day up, that's also fine. Now one of them's gonna have free reign is the only problem. Unless I just go ahead and kill one right now. They're all very low, so I don't need to keep that one alive for any reason. So if I just see if I can shoot this guy, that would solve a problem. Ah well. No way that just happened. Oh it did just happen, unfortunately. Can't have everything. Instinct might be able to clean this up, but it's unlikely. Look at the speed of death. But we gotta give him the opportunity, we gotta let him try. So go on, go on Instinct. 22%, not very good. 43%, somewhat better. Eh. Adjusting sights. Just take it. Let me set up an overwatch here. Alright, I'd say at this point. Probably disable this one on the right so he's easier to capture. And then maybe suppress this one over here. That one can't quite flank me. I might just overwatch that guy, I don't know. Might be smarter. This guy's an easy pick, but disabling someone's gonna take him out of the fight as well as set up an easy capture. And I can easily kill him next turn. This guy's probably the most likely to wreak havoc. Oh, well, that said, if he hits these guys, they get a lot of health if they hit either of these two. So these two are the most dangerous ones because they're liable to move up and hit my backliners. So probably disable... Or even kill this guy. Just go ahead and kill this one. We'll suppress this guy. And then the most dangerous thing that's going to happen to us is the Thin Man hitting Dean in half cover. Which shouldn't be too terrible, if it does happen. Ow, you dick. Ding dong, come on, you're supposed to make him not do that. Alright. We're gonna point of damage on instinct. And that's really because... Oh my god. <laughs> that's really because we were out of position. Over here with Zim. But what can you do, really? Now, at this point, what I need is for j Bells to move up. Moving out. Yep, I need eyes on that guy. Uh, you could disable him, but that's not what I need. I need... Hmm, that's not what I need at all. JB might just have to kill this one. Which would be an awful shame be a waste of a captive. But uh, with Kung Tot not able to see there, we don't have a lot of choices. Uh, that's very unfortunate. We could have disabled this one and then captured the other one, but I think it's going to be too much fucking around if we try it the other way around. This one's just going to run. Let's run you up. Let's try and get a capture first. Let's try and come out of this with at least one capture for the one point of health we just took on Instinct. Disable could help that. Uh huh. Take a chill pill. Yeah, chill the fuck out, idiot. Okay. Nice. So there's one captive. Uh, it's just regrettable that we can't really let this guy live any longer. Because it would have been really nice to try and get two Thin Men captives. 
but it's just gonna have to wait for next time. Hostiles pacified. But one captive is better than none. Heading to that location. And that's really just because we got caught out of position with Zim there, uh, because we, you know, maybe maybe the mistake was having scuba men up here where they could patrol into them easier. Probably would have got another turn of movement if scuba men hadn't been waiting. But in the end, I played it how I played it. Back online. Uh, been unfortunate that we couldn't finish off the third guy to make that really secure, but what are you gonna do? Scuba man still got hot, uh, still got shot by the guy he was suppressing. So Rolling. sometimes the tactical options you have aren't gonna stop him from hitting you anyway. That's just how the game goes. But now we should just have the outsider left, Position confirmed. Position confirmed. and we've got two arc charges to spend on him, and we will do so. On the move. So, I mean, obviously, um, more captors is always better, but oh, yeah. one of the big reasons I want to get multiple captors as well uh, is that, you know, I, I interrogate a captive and then the council will trade you lots of juicy rewards for additional captors you have if you trade them to them. So, getting two captors would have been an easy setup for that. So, it's a shame we won't have two. That said, we got plenty of time to get another Thin Man captive. We haven't even autopsied them yet, you know? Like, we've got plenty of time. We're just getting a nice little jail going for when we do have our research done to be able to do that. Moving to position. Now, is it safe to uh, move up with hastiness here? Let's go ahead and throw this. The outsider should be the last part on the map at this point. On the AO. A lot less thin men crowing this one than last time. They're outsourcing robots to do the Thin Men's job. Internal power struggles. Thin Men way. unions getting shafted in the alien homeworld. Orders confirmed. Moving out. Probably a, a short hospital stay for instinct, but that's okay. We've got an over and abundance of assault, so they'll be able to take his place, I'm sure. But no one will act on instinct like the Dean does, I'm afraid. We'll be we'll be missing the instinct for about a week. Now with two outsiders alive, Bien. we'll just be trying to exploit our flashbangs really hard on these guys to try and capture both. Heading to that location. Should also burn our med kits before we go in, Confirm. just to get everyone at full health in case anything goes okay. wrong in the capture attempts. Because, I mean, the fight's going to be over in three turns anyway. No point stabilizing someone, better to just heal them up. Usually people are like, Beagle, why didn't you use your kit? Usually it's because I want to keep the kits to stabilize people in case they get critically wounded. That's usually the decision I've made. Alright. Now that's Earth. It sounds like they're actually out here. Which means we want to come around the right, coming through here. Alright. Keep it moving, gang. Pretty good mission, apart from those shots we've been taking. Apart from that uh, point of damage we took on instinct. Grab some meld. Grab some meld, grab the captive. That's a pretty good mission so far. We're gonna go ahead and use Kung Tot's heal on instinct. Take some aspirin. You'll be fine. Apparently Kung Tot just gave him some aspirin, according to that voice bank. I'm not sure about that. My head's killing me from this plasma burn. I'll just have just have some aspirin. It works for my six-year-old daughter, it'll work for you. On my way. Kung Tot, are you calling me? Yes, Instinct, I'm calling you a little girl. You just got shot in the fucking I'm chest. Right, just Commander. deal with it. Solid copy. Will do. Okay. Okay. Oh, 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 you know, um... Yeah, they are right there. What was that? You know, Wasteland Ghost uh, dropped some knowledge on me the other day. 
Uh, which is actually blowing up the alloy walls in a UFO doesn't reduce the amount of alloys you'll get. It's just blowing up the components like power sources and flight computers that does that. Very interesting, I did not know that. Um, I'm gonna give you another skip, because probably the best way to do this with them here is me taking the long way around, hitting them from both sides, so... Give me a break here, I'll head around uh, and I'll skip time for your convenience. kind of slow down here, uh, just just before I go in, because I might potentially make contact around here. I need to talk about the uh, I, I need to talk about the anatomy of a breach for a second because I got a few comments last time I did this, or at least one comment on the last time I did this, um, with the li landed medium, uh, where one of my commenters, a uh, long-time commenters, was like, "Well, you know, you you wasted a lot of time going around the map, and then in the end, the outsiders just went inside anyway. So, wasn't it just a huge waste?" Um, and, yeah, not really, like, uh, let me let me explain why I do what I do here. So, I mean, if you just come in straight from a doorway and the outsiders are here, the outsiders are going to take cover in these positions, and they're going to fight against you. And you don't really have a lot of ways to get into the flank to capture them. You don't really have a lot of ways to get into the flank to reliably kill them apart from assaults. And if you have enough assaults and flashbangs, it doesn't matter. But if you want to be as safe as possible, you want to set up those flanks and easy kills. Now, the thing is, going around the outside of the UFO isn't necessarily to put them in an easy flank, it's to control and kind of shepherd where they go. So there's a few things that I've learned ba the AI base where they're going to go off of, you know, how they make the decisions, and that is, and they know where everyone is, they listen to the footsteps, I'm pretty sure, so they know I'm flanking them right now once they get activated. They're going to be considering how many people are on each side of them, and they're going to bias their cover taking to that, so if there's more people on the right, I think they're going to take cover to the left. Uh, I mean, if there's more people on the right, they're going to take cover bias to the right. The other thing is, you've got to consider, I'm pretty sure they will also bias on who activates them. So if I activate with these guys first, hopefully they're going to take cover to the right more likely than they would otherwise. But of course, that interacts with the fact that there's four guys on the right, so maybe they'll be less likely to be able to just charge through me. So, you know, if I was being really smart, and I realized it's a bit too late, I should have sent a third person around to make sure it was equal weights. So the idea here isn't to, like, just come out here freak them out. Like, if they go inside, that's fine, because them going inside puts them, you know, if they go inside like here, they can't make it inside there, thank god. But if they go inside to this position, then it puts me in perfect range to just kill them everyone else. If I'd activated from this doorway straight up, they wouldn't run to this position. And that's what happened last time with the landed. They ran inside the cockpit. Whereas, if I hadn't bothered going around to flank them, they would have just run outside to some log cover or some bullshit, and I might not have been able to flank them as well. So that's why I do what I do. It's... That's the anatomy of a breach to me. It's a lot of trying to force the AI into doing a certain thing. Not so much... Not so much just getting easy flanks on them. It's more getting flanks on them because of what you force them to do. That said, it can always go completely wrong. The AI has a mind of its own. Um, and they could just charge me here. Roger that. Heading out. But, I mean, if you're asking me what I think will happen, I think they're about here. I think I'll pop out with the assault, and they're gonna run inwards to get cover from both sides. Probably take this position right here, ignoring the squad site sniper. Take cover behind this shit. I can flank out to the left from there, hopefully a bit. Get some flashbangs on them. Run and gun the assault. Bang. Start hitting them. Disabling shot from the flank with no cover. I need to get Kung Dot in a slightly better position for that, because he's got a heavy cover in the way right now, so probably around here would be better. Uh, and then, yeah, the worst case thing that can happen would be if they just were really smart and just charged me if they were close enough to this corner. We'll deal with that when it comes to it. Hopefully if they do that, they'll be totally exposed to these guys for a follow-up. It just won't be very close range. Let's actually see what does happen. Uh, yeah. But that's what I'm hoping will happen. And they are quite close to the interior. So we'll get up nice and close. I'm on it, Commander. 
Headed there now. That should be... It's awkward where I gotta go, because if I go too far left, I can't see through this. If I go too far right, I can't see if they run indoors. I'm gonna position myself to middle of the road, I think. And then equally, I just need to make sure that I got enough people who can flank them on the left if they run left. But I think this should be good. And for the record, like, I don't mind when people say in comments, like, you know, you know, wh why did you do this? Or, you know, it seems like that was a waste of time. But I, I do feel like it's worth letting people know that, like, I do make, I do make mistakes, you know, I, I make tons of mistakes, but um, in a lot of cases, I do really intend to do something. Uh, and people just sometimes don't understand the reason behind it. And that's why I like to take a couple minutes to explain it. Because then in all future breaches, you know exactly what I'm doing. Speaking of which... Yay! So we got one taking cover to the right, one running inside. And, and you can see here, so... They don't seem to care about Squad Sight Sniper because I guess there's only one of him and he's the least of their worries. And he's further away. They probably base it off their hearing range, so they, may, they might not know about the Squad Sight Sniper. Um, this guy's running to the right because he wants cover from both of them. They do know about this breaching team, they've heard them, they're very wily. Uh, this guy's not even taking cover from the assault because he's more frightened of this team. He wants to take cover from that team. Uh, and, you know, not, not to like blow my own trumpet, but I'm just trying to say, you know, that's why I set up a breach like this. Because otherwise, these motherfuckers would have just taken cover here, here, behind this heavy cover, you know, and it would have just been much harder to dig them out, and certainly much harder to get a capture on them. Uh, whereas right now, I'm in range to capture both of them. Uh, and that's, you know, that's what I was going for, so I, that's really good for me. I can disable one of them, so I just need to focus on trying to capture the other one, and if I can't capture the other one, just kill in his ass. Um, so how are we going to capture one of them? That could potentially kill. Maybe save that. Maybe save that shit. But this won't kill. If I run around with Zim to this position, it'll deal a lot of damage, but it won't kill. Now I just need to weaken him a little bit, uh, and then go for a capture, essentially. I'm going to start my disable early. So go ahead and disable him. Excellent. This won't feel too good. So he's no threat this turn, we can try and capture him next turn if this one fails, and that's very good. We're just going to focus on capturing this guy, I've only got two arc thrower charges, so if I fail to capture this guy, we're just going to kill him. So we, we actually don't even need to worry about taking cover as much right now. Just need to worry about this guy running away from my capture, really, so... I'll probably just put myself in a position where I can capture and then chase that guy if he runs. So I'll move to right here. I just need a, I need a ballistic pistol non-crit on this guy. Um, to make this work. So if I bring you around, Daishi, to that location. you should be able to give me that pretty easily. I, I can't flank him because then it's very likely to crit and kill him. So I'm just going to go for the through cover one. And I'm not going to risk any more pistol shots than that. That's enough. That's 42%. That's a decent chance to stun. Easy, buddy. Easy. This new artifact as soon as you return. Now, we got two flashbangs at this point, and it's unlikely we're going to need more than that many turns. Now, we've, uh, with, with the two flashbangs, what I'm going to do here is throw one over so he can't run too far away. The point being that I don't want him to get away from Hyper Geek. I don't want him to get away from the cap shell. So we're going to keep him pinned right there. He can't shoot me, so fuck him. Uh, let's put Scuba Man in, in a position where Scuba Man's ready to, like, double heater him or something stupid to, uh... To wear him down next turn for the capture. And we'll put J-Balls in the same okay. kind of area. And you know what? May as well start wearing him down a little bit now anyway. He's gonna regen that. I don't give a shit. Alright, so as predicted, he's trying to fucking run for it. I think he probably has got out of range for a capture now. Uh, annoyingly. So now we've got to get a little bit more creative. We're going to have to suppress and flashbang this guy. Which is why I'm happy to have the other flashbang to make that happen. Suppression and flashbang together should make this safe. Um, no, he didn't even just... Actually, 
Because he was flashbanged, he had he didn't even get to uh, undisable himself because of that. So actually, I can just fucking shoot the guy. Fuck you. Fuck you, guy. I wonder if I can surround him. No, sadly not. Alright, so five, six, seven, eight. A lot of these laser weapons could potentially crit him at this point. Um, the carbine shouldn't be able to, I don't think. I'm rolling. So we'll lead with the carbine here. Yeah, nice six. We'll let him regen and then we'll hit him with a ballistic pistol next turn. I'm just gonna sit around him to try and keep him where he is. We can't get too close with instinct because close combat specialists will kill him. But we can get close with everybody else. Uh, why don't you go right there? It's like sheepdogging sometimes. You're just trying to shepherd them. And we'll flashbang him again so he can't get away too far. We haven't got that thing in the way to stop us from capturing him this time. Just basically imagine that the aliens are the sheep and this entire XCOM team is just a pack of uh, of those cute little collie sheepdogs. That's what's happening right now. And we're going to shepherd him in this direction. Just going to make sure that Instinct's not too close. Or, you know, it'll fuck him up. Let's put Instinct over here to make him run in this way. Alright, let's get the Ballistic Pistol in position for next turn. What's your play, Outsider? You can't run that way. Oh, they're so brave when they do that. Now he should regen to, yes, six. Which means it should be time... I think a laser pistol will deal the perfect amount of damage here if it crits. So I probably want to go up for a laser pistol. On the move. Unless I've got that wrong somehow. No, it should be perfect. Here, I'll run and gun in. Moving to firing position. If a ballistic pistol does a max of 4 on a crit, a laser pistol should do a max of 5 on a crit without gunslinger, which we don't have. I'm ready to be proven wrong. There's your 5. When Bradford says everything by the numbers, this is what he's talking about. Uh, last chance to live, outside of. Three for three, baby. And that is... <laughs> he can taunt into a little yoga pose like he's getting sucked into his crystal. I never noticed that before. Uh, and there you go. Three captives for three captives. Uh, three captives for three Arctoro charges and a meld canister. Apart from the uh, point of damage that Instinct took, uh, that you could not have come out of this mission better, really. Uh, we've got power sources intact. I think. Very fun times. Mm -hmm. Is that all that's left of the specimen we attempted to capture? Yes. I believe we may have found the source of the strange readings we picked up when we first encountered it. What is it, Doctor? <laughs> We're not exactly sure. It's organic in nature, yet highly magnetized, and it appears to resonate very faintly within a specific electromagnetic spectrum. Is it a bionicle? It's currently unclear how or... And perhaps that's because this is outside your field of expertise, Doctor. Damn! If what you're saying is true, this object is an antenna. One that's receiving a signal. That signal? Can we trace it? No. At least not yet. We would first need to determine its encryption algorithm. Drop the ball, Shen. My team can handle that. Yeah! In that case, I will focus on constructing an interface between this object and our global communications array, which we'll need to trace the signal. Then it looks like researching this crystal should be our top priority. Oh, you're a genius, Bradford. I fucking love the cutscenes in this game. Now, I love all the characters unironically. Fucking love them. They're great. I love them so much. I, every single one of them. But I also love this hilarious dynamic that they have to me after watching these cutscenes so many times. Is that <laughs> every cutscene that has all three of them in it is going to go like this. Okay? If, if there's something in it that we don't yet know, at some point Bradford will say, What is it? Alright. Then... Shen and Valin are gonna bitch at each other passive-aggressively the entire conversation about how they're better than each other and how their department is worth more than the other one. But they're still friends at the end of the day. It's just like this kind of 
slightly bitchy rivalry, which I really love. And they kind of get their little jabs into each other. But more than anything, I love Bradford. Everything that comes up, he's like, what is it, Doctor? And then he just immediately tries to find a way to either use it to kill more aliens, capture aliens, tase aliens, interrogate aliens, assault bases, make bombs out of it. He's... <laughs> He is uh, a soldier's soldier. Um, but yeah, anyway, I love those cutscenes. Now, back to this. Some nice little rank ups, which is excellent. <gasps> Kung Tart's up to Tech Sergeant is excellent, so we're probably going to be picking up um, Sharpshooter or Ranger on him. Probably not so much um, not so much Tax Sense on him. And then Zim up to Sergeant, probably going to be getting Executioner on her. But as always, I'm leaving these till the mission. Uh, now, now we got a lot of plasma weapons out of that, which is really good as well. One Thin Man Captive, Bunch of Alloys, Illyrium, Power Source, sadly everything else was damaged. Including those robot wrecks, which we blew the hell up. Um, but we did get two outside of shards out of that as well, which is, uh, very good. Very good operation, very happy. Now something really magical has happened, and I gotta thank, uh, my commenters on the tubes for actually reminding me of this. Uh, let me just sell this for some much needed money. Um... Usually this is an upgrade I'm very, very, you know, coveting of, but ever since Asia got the Officer Training School bonuses taken away from it, I've actually just kind of out of spite not looked at the Officer Training School. Not out of spite, but because I don't have enough money. Um, but we can get squad size too, we can get eight, uh, eight soldiers. And I looked up on the UFOpedia wiki, uh, and apparently I could have got this at 115 rank, so... I don't freaking know how long ago we could have got this, probably about seven or eight missions at this point. Um, but there you go, I just haven't bothered looking at the Officer Training School for so long because I haven't thought I'd be able to afford anything. Um, but that is awesome. So now, um, you know, I've probably, you know, it's a bit of a blunder, having missed out on probably seven or eight missions. I could have trained up, you know, probably three or four new people to, like, Lance Corporal by this time. Um, same token, I've been getting pretty hard with fatigue, so... On the other hand, it's almost... Well, I could have just taken new rookies, you know. The point being, you know, it was, it was a mess up. It, it was a big mistake. But now I've got it. Thank you for reminding me. I'm going to grab squad size 2, and now, you know, the fun starts here. Now I can actually start taking medics on every mission. Or, on especially hard missions, I can, you know, I can take two assaults. I can take two rocketeers, pair of snipers. Um, you know, when I get squad size 2, it's supposed to be that point at which I go, now it's time to take every class. But, in practice, I'll go on a terror mission and I'll just take, like, two assaults and I'll be like, Fuck it! I need more shotguns! I need more running gun! Uh, and it's, it's very, it's very short-sighted of me because I do need to train up new troops. So, um, God bless. God bless, uh, everyone. We got us some squad side 2, uh, squad size 2. Now, uh, I also really need to get more officer upgrades. Uh, I think the next 200 bucks I get might have to go towards that. Uh, I kinda need more laboratories more. Um, but I do need to get on that because I need to start training them up as well. But that is great. That is super, super great. Uh, and we're gonna, we're gonna be training more people because of that. Uh, in fact, well, all these rookies are gonna get trained pretty soon because I was doing fine on missions before with seven people. Now, hopefully, I can just take PFCs on some of these missions, you know, as kind of, even if they're just dead weight, uh, it's, it's superior. Uh, and I, I do need to get some more people trained up. Uh, yeah, anyway, you know, leave that till we hit a mission. I'll think about it then. Um, but yeah, that, that is great, 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 great stuff. Um, we've got a cobot operation coming up. Well, hopefully it's a data recovery so I can use my new eight-man squad. And it wasn't a total waste. Um, but yeah, I think... Let me just check my air game. People have been saying that apparently... It worked like this in beta 13 that you could repair and rearm at the same time. So I'm watching this with bated breath to see how that experiment works. Uh, you know, I sh I'll, and I'll definitely be rearming Leonard and Porter if it works properly. Well, Porter's already got one, but you know what I'm saying. Um, but yeah, I got the laser rifles coming, I got the mutons coming. Uh, I think it's time to keep going. Alright, come on data recovery. Shit. Well, it's gonna be a four-man squad anyway, guys. Um, Operation Cursed Dawn. We are confident that you will handle this matter with discretion. Settlement even. Alright, well, uh, it's up to me to get them out of there, so let me pick a, a COVID extraction squad. We'll be jumping right into this.
Alright, so uh, a bunch of new bloods going out on this COVID extraction. Uh, you know, I, I say that not in rank, but in they've never been on one before. Only Organ with the black armor, signifying he's been on one of these uh, shindigs in the past. Um, but, basically, Merlin's the best infantry we've got at the time. Um, Drake's a really good assault who just hasn't happened to be out on one of these before. Cell with rapid fire is probably actually going to be really good to, probably as effective as a shotgun, to double tap and take out these, you know, heavies and everything that you need taken out in one turn. Uh, that's why I'm bringing her instead of, say, another assault or a scout, whatever. I haven't really got any high-level engineers. I would have brought Hyper Geek, but he's exhausted from that last uh, UFO mission, or he's fatigued, so I'm not going to exhaust him. Uh, and then Kong with Ranger uh, should have some very damaging rockets. We got the full-length laser rifle on him because you don't want to you don't want to scale down your firepower on these exalt missions when you've only, you've only got four guns firing. You don't want to go down to an SMG because you're going to lose too much crit and killing potential when you're not firing those rockets. Um, but apart from that. I feel like we're going on the tank trap map. It's a dangerous map to go on. Um, it's... Uh, tank trap, sorry, tank warehouse. It's it, it can be really rough. It's a big map and you can get caught, uh, cut off from the LZ because of that. Same token, you can get lucky and not run in the exalt at all. And that's what we're trying to aim for. Um, one thing I might change up is give Drake an alien grenade just to combo with the rocket launcher uh, in case I need any tanks blown up on that turn. Uh, but anyway... This is pretty much my team. Uh, let's get out there and let's make the best of it. Touching down. Exalt has a new cell operating out of Nigeria. Strike one will have to protect against any hostile activity while the data is being secured. Alright, so not tank warehouse. We're going out to the observatory. Uh, it's an interesting one. I think back when they made the COVID extractions for man, uh, this was my first COVID extraction. So I'm probably just going to try and use the same uh, strategy I used then, which worked pretty well. Um, we'll catch you next time for Operation Cursed Dawn.